Well, as we come to uh, our final two devotions in 1 Peter, uh, in chapter 5, uh, we're going to read the first section today, and then tomorrow we'll, we'll go into the next section. Uh, let me encourage you, if you have not uh, been caught up or you haven't watched all of our devotions in 1 Peter, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and our webpage, ameliabaptistchurch.org. Uh, you can get caught up on all that we've been going through in 1 Peter. It's essential to, to see where we're going, to see where we've come in Peter's encouragement. Uh, in chapter 5, we're going to pick up in verse 1 uh, right now. Peter writes, I exhort the elders among you as fellow elder and witness to the suffering of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory about to be revealed. Shepherd God's flock among you, not overseeing out of compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not out of greed for money, but eagerly, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. In the same way, you who are younger be subject to elders. All of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another, because God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Uh, so as we look here, it, uh, this is one of those passages that many of us could quickly say, well, this doesn't apply to me. Uh, Peter uses the word elder here. This would be a word that we could, we could see used uh, shepherd, pastor, uh, leader. So in today's world, we could consider uh, a number of different positions. Uh, what I want us to see here, though, is that the encouragement may be directly given to those who are pastors in the church, leaders in the church. Uh, are those in the highest levels of authority of a church. I think the implication in the teaching applies to everyone who exercises authority over anyone in the Christian sense. So all of us have some kind of role of influence and authority when it comes to our Christian faith. Even Samuel, who, who, who's about to be six years old, exercises authority through his example uh, to, to my daughter Jaylee, who's four years old. So we all have a level of authority that we exercise. In the same way, um, Peter's going to encourage, uh, in verse 5, those who are younger to be subject to elders. And this uh, reminds us, it's, he's not talking about age, I don't believe. He's not talking about younger elders and older elders. He, he's talking about those who maybe are spiritually younger or spiritually placed under the authority of someone else. We all have authority, and we are all under authority as Christians in this world. So how do we exercise those positions? Uh, so let's just look what, what, what Peter encourages. Uh, he, he's exhorting elders as a fellow elder, one who shares in the suffering and the glory of Christ. We've already discussed that uh, in previous devotions through 1 Peter. He says, shepherds God's, God's flock among you. Take care of those that you have authority over. Take care of those that God has placed under you, whether that's a Sunday school class, a Bible study, uh, just people in your home. Uh, uh, people younger in the faith, children, uh, it, the list could go on and on. Anyone that you are placed in a place of authority or, or, or um, influence over someone, how are we to shepherd those people? Overseeing out of, uh, not overseeing out of compulsion, but willingly as God would have you. We don't do it because we're expected to. We do it because we desire to because the gospel has changed us. I think this is where we can get into so much trouble serving the Lord. We do it because we think we're supposed to, which we are. But if we don't have a desire, if we don't have the, the overwhelming desire to serve because of what Christ has done for us, we have to ask ourselves a deeper question. What's wrong with our hearts? Now, that doesn't mean that we always love the position we're placed. That doesn't mean for Steve, that doesn't mean that you love doing children's ministry, but you love serving because God has served you in such an incredible way. And I have to be quite honest. If I'm totally honest with you, there are days I don't feel like being a pastor. I don't feel like doing this thing that God has called me to, but I serve because God has changed me. And that's what compels and calls me, not just simply because it's what I'm supposed to do. We don't do it out of greed for money, but eagerly. Listen, if you want to get rich, uh, ministry is not the place to do it usually, but many people are focused on money rather than obedience, and that's always going to lead to destruction. Verse 3, not lording it over those entrusted to us, but being it as, as an example to the flock. We don't use our authority for our benefit. We don't uh, wave authority like a weapon, but we use our authority that Christ has given us to serve those that are under us. 
uh, by being an example of Christian living, Christian obedience, and Christian humility to the flock. Verse 4, uh, Peter reminds us it's God who will give the blessing for our faithful service. And in the same way, those who are younger, all of us who are under authority, our job is to be subjective to that authority, to listen to that authority, to, to obey. That means that your Sunday school teacher, your deacon, your, your pastor, uh, other church staff, in the place of authority they're placed over you, the role they have to play, you submit and you trust and you follow them because of what God has done in your life. Maybe not even because you respect them. Not, you may not agree with everything they do, but because God has called you to be different, to be subject to the authority. And finally, and I would say above all of this, all of you clothe yourself, the second part of verse 5, all of you clothe yourself with humility toward one another because God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. None of us are to exercise authority or submission out of any kind of pride or selfishness or, or, or our own intention. We always exercise authority and submission humbly, understanding that the role that we are in is because God has placed us there. Even if you're doing the right thing, but you're doing it with a prideful heart, you're guilty of sinning before God. Even if you're doing the right thing, but doing that of selfish ambition or your own advancement, you're sinning because you're doing it out of wrong desire and a wrong heart. All that we do in God's kingdom, whether in place of authority or a place of submission, as the elder or as the younger, we do so humbly before God for His glory, for the advancement of His name, and the growth of His church and His kingdom. Father, I come before you today and I pray that each of us would exercise the authority you've given us in a godly manner. That each of us would submit to authority in exactly the way you would have us. And that we would do all of this, fulfilling our job and our roles and our calling humbly before you. Thinking of others, thinking of you first and ourselves last. Help us, God, to live the example that you have called us to. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, hey, have a blessed day. It's great to see, see you, those of you who joined us live, and I know many of you will watch later. Uh, thank you for doing that. Join us tomorrow at 11 o'clock uh, on Facebook and then after uh, on Instagram and later on YouTube or our webpage. Join us at, for our final installment in First Peter. Have a blessed rest of the day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.